Hi, I'm Wonkster1970 and today I'm going to be installing a set of replacement catalytic converters on the 2001 Ford F-150 Super Crew Cab. Let's get started. This is the driver side Magnaflow catalytic converter part number 93447. It's supposed to be a direct OEM replacement and this is the Magnaflow 93448 passenger side. First thing I'm going to be doing is removing the negative battery terminal and that is a 8 millimeter. I got to find out where those O2 sensors go for the uh, upstream. I might hopefully they're right in the back there and can reach them. Next thing I'm going to be doing is removing all of these screws up along here and here and there's a couple push clips that need to be removed and I think there's a cable tie that I'm going to have to cut here so I can get this inner fender out. I'm going to take that off and then I'll be back. There are also these 932nd head screws up in here that need to be removed. There's one, two, three, I think there's three. So I'm going to remove them and hopefully this will come out. Now that I've got the fender well out, I can get to the bolts easier and I need to find out where the O2 sensor wire runs in the upstream. It looks like it must be right down in there. I'm going to have to locate that. I'm going to take the other fender well out. And this connector had to be removed from the fender well. And I think that should be it for this side. Same thing with this side. Screws up in here that need to come out. And then there's the other ones up inside of here. There are a couple push nuts that need to come out of there and this guard has got to come off so I'm gonna get that taken off I'm gonna push this out and this here has got to come out and that should be it okay, I had to remove these two connectors and then just drop that piece from the inside of the wheel well and now I am going to try to locate where that connector goes. Now oh, right there is one for the O2 sensor. Way up in there. Let's see if I can get that off. And then see if these nuts will come off. Then I'll have to go back see if I can get the rest of it out. This is the exhaust off the left side or the passenger side, the kind of the converter. I was able to pull that out without taking the drive shaft off the front. And here is the replacement one. See, there is a difference in between the two, but I'm hoping that since I'm replacing left and the right, I won't have a problem getting it back together. Now I got to take off the other side. See, I got the exhaust. This is where the exhaust was at. Slid it down by the front axle. Or not the front front drive shaft I got it slid down past there and I'm going to disconnect the exhaust I might not pull this cross brace out I hope not and I'm gonna have to remove there's a clamp here with a hanger on and there's two hangers back there I'm gonna have to remove them I'm thinking they're either half inch or nine sixteenths. They are half inch. Yeah, it seems like it's half inch. Hopefully I can get them off or they're gonna break. And then I'll just have to get new hangers for it. So I'm gonna try taking them off and then I'll be back. Okay, I snapped off both the bolts. What I thought was gonna happen. 
Let's see if I can tap it off. There we go. That's one off. I just need to get a new clamp for that. I'm going to do the same back here after I get the bolt out of my socket. Doing the same thing back here, trying to get these off. I might have better luck with these. They don't look as rusted. I got one here. I got one over here. So let me try taking them off. Okay, with the clamps off, the whole exhaust is falling down. So I'm going to go up front and slide it back far enough that I can get the exhaust get the kind of the converter loose off of there maybe be able to pull it out through if not might have to remove that cross brace off of the transmission I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but right up here is where I need to get this exhaust disconnected from and I'm going to lift the exhaust and hopefully we go it off supported the rear of the exhaust with a couple jack stands and I was able to separate it up here so now maybe I'll be able to get this catalytic converter out I'm not sure okay I managed to get the connector your two sensor off it's way up in there and if I was able to get that transmission fill slash check tube off I would be able to get up in there easier but this bolt here is very questionable and it might end up snapping off you can see that right there but I might end up trying to get that off later okay it looks like I'm gonna have to take this cross brace out and to do that I have to unbolt it from the transmission and I have to unbolt it over there and I have to unbolt it over here and then I gotta support it. I guess I'm gonna support it by the transfer case. Hopefully at the rear of it, if possible. Okay, here is the old driver's or passenger side. This is the old passenger side Kelly converter. As you can see, this shield is also rattly, rusting apart. I don't know of any holes in it but it definitely needed replaced. The shield is loose. And it was rusted right here. This is a replacement magna flow. So I'm going to be installing that back in and I'll show you what I had to do to get this out. Okay, to remove this, I had to remove this cross brace. And to do that, there's two 18 millimeter bolts or nuts that were on the transmission mount, I have a ratchet strap in the back holding it up and there was three bolts on each side that had to come out they were 18 millimeter nuts and using an 18 millimeter socket to get them off and this bracket was in there those two bolts and this one was up towards the top and while I got this apart, I'm going to go and torque up the header bolts, retorque them, and I got to find out where that O2 sensor connection came off up inside. And also, there was two shield bolts that came off. They're right here. They bolted onto this bracket. You can see it was held on right there, and the other one that was there broke. So I'm either going to have to get a new clip or just go and put a nut on it. So I'm going to climb up underneath and see if we can find out where the O2 sensor goes. Or the connector connects back to the engine and I'll be back. Okay. Up in there is a little plastic retainer. And it's held onto that fuel line it looks like. And I was able to get both my arms up in there and push that O2 sensor wire connector back in through. So that seems to be good for now. I'm going to be putting a little bit of never seize on these bolts up by the headers. They didn't seem to really rust the last time. And whenever I put them on, took them off. But uh, just a little added assurance. I got the 
front O2 sensor reconnected. You can see it up in there. And I haven't reconnected the rear one yet because I don't know if the exhaust is going to drop down while I'm trying to get the other Kennelly converter on. So I'm going to try sliding the other, well, I'm going to slide the other Kennelly converter up in, see if I can join the two. And to join the two pipes together, I'm going to be using this exhaust seal joint and crank sealer. So let's get that on there. And see if I can get these pipes together. That connector back in there, I got that one on. The way I had to do it was take a pair of slip locks and wrap it around it and squeeze the two together once I got it turned around in there and put in place. That one is tough to get into. Hope. It's on there, right? It looks like it is. It's almost like it was supposed to go up in and around. But uh, it's in place. Little dipstick tube is right there, I think. It's, uh, I'm not sure what that is. But anyways, it's plugged in. Hopefully it works. I'm going to be tightening these up. These uh, exhaust manifold to tailpipe bolts. The manual says 25 to 35 foot-pounds. I'm not sure what that would be in newton meters. But I'm going to be using this 11 sixteenths. adapter that I have, a couple extensions, and a 17 millimeter socket because I have to get up in between the O2 sensor. And the only way to do that is with that adapter. So I'm going to tighten them up, snug them up, torque them to 25 foot-pounds and then I'll be back. Okay, I ended up torquing up both of them to 20 foot-pounds instead of 25. So 25 seemed a little too tight for them. These are uh, aftermarket exhaust headers, so may not need as tightened as tight. That's just what I'm going to go with. But uh, 20 is good. Yeah, let me go and do the other side. These are both torqued down to 20 foot-pounds. I have a washer, flat washer, lock washer, and a nut on there. Looks pretty good. Got the pipe sealer on there, clamp. Got to tighten that down. I have the bolt on there, or the nut on there. I'm going to put the uh, cross brace here back on and find the torque specs. I could get the bolts back in, find the torque specs for that, and I'll be back. You can see I have the transfer case held up. I have it lifted up with a, I think that's a four by six or a six by six, six by 12, I don't know. It's a big piece of wood. And I was able to lift that up and get the cross member lined up and the bolts through. So I'm going to torque them down, and I guess I can lower this first, should be good. So I'm lower this out of the way, and then I can take that strap off that I had holding it up. And I'll have to put the exhaust back up in. those bolts in and get this other bolt 
for the exhaust tightened up and I have a couple bolts up here I got to get a replacement clip for one of these it holds the shield in place and get these bolts on get those nuts on I have three on this side three on this side two here the transmission mount so I'm lining them up with the old marks that were on there and there was an arrow pointing towards the front I gotta get this clamp on and I gotta set the exhaust okay I got this torqued to 30 foot pounds I torqued this not the 30 foot pounds these two to 50 and I tightened this one up here tighten all those bolts up in there I couldn't get the torque wrench up in there so I got a ratchet on them I tighten them up as tight as I could get by hand I figure they're probably about uh, 30 about eh, maybe about 50 foot pounds so I got them all tightened up exhaust is on there I can't get the exhaust up in here yet I gotta get a set of new clamps for the back and I gotta get that clip that holds the shield on this side and some clips to hold the fender wells in and I think that is about it see right there is my fix and my patch and the catalytic converter which is going to hold no leaks so far look back here here no leak here and I got a new hanger on or a new clamp on here I'm gonna get a different one for on there and let's take a look at the tailpipe section got the new clamp on here and new clamp on here and that should do it for the exhaust next thing I'm going to be doing is reinstalling these fender wells forgot that I had to pick these up from advanced it is part number 961315 Dorman part that is the replacement clip for the one that I had broken or had broken it goes up underneath the truck so I'm gonna go and put that back on this is gonna go right up in here and should just slide right into place and then take the bolt so let's just cool down quite a bit run that bolt up over top of there up. Okay, I'm gonna get a 13 millimeter ratchet on there and then tighten that up. Tightening this up with a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench. It's the easiest way to get in here. So I'm gonna tighten this up and then I'll get the fender wells back in. Picked up a couple of these panel push retainers. Dorman part number 963013D. I only got a pack of two. Gonna replace a couple of the ones that were damaged. Okay, I've got this. Splash or the fender splash guard in. And I've got all the bolts put back up in here. Got the wire up through the uh, wheel sensor wire connected back up through there. All the Nets, wherever they were, little trees put back in, all the bolts up there, 
and we'll go to the other side show you that okay. everything's back together over here speed sensor wire connector is right there I'm missing the shield that wasn't on there since new or since I've had it and the vacuum hoses are connected through there that'll about do it all we got to do yet is lower back down on the ground and take her for a test drive and that should be it